So, whenever a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen is burned, that means reacted with oxygen, the compound essentially gets ripped apart and reforms into molecules of carbon dioxide. And these carbon dioxide molecules contain all the carbon that was in the original compound. And the hydrogen has a different fate. The hydrogen ends up forming water with the oxygen. So when we get water from burning a compound with carbon and hydrogen, all that hydrogen came from the compound. The oxygen in carbon dioxide and water comes from the air in which the substance is burned. And so chemists can determine how much of each carbon and hydrogen were in a compound uh, by doing this burning or combustion and can use that information to find the empirical formula of the compound. And this process is called combustion analysis. And a way to summarize, if I have a compound with carbon and hydrogen, and it can have other elements too, uh, if you react it with oxygen, all of the carbon ends up as CO2. And all of the hydrogen ends up as water. Now, why can we figure out how much carbon was in the compound and how much water was? Well, that's because we know the chemical formula and the mass ratio of each. Because if there's a carbon atom in CO2, 12 parts of the mass of CO2 is carbon. And the two oxygen atoms collectively make up another 32 parts of oxygen for a total of 44. So that means if I burn a certain amount of substance and say I got 3 grams of CO2, I can figure out based on 3 grams of CO2 and the ratio of part to whole by mass of carbon to CO2, I can figure out how much carbon came from that compound that I burned. Very simple conversion because there are 44 grams of CO2 for every 12 grams of carbon in the CO2, which comes out to 0.82 grams of carbon. So that means if I burned a hydrocarbon and got 3 grams of carbon dioxide, and the part of carbon dioxide's mass that is carbon comes out to 0.82 grams, I know those 0.82 grams had to come from the carbon in my hydrocarbon. And I can do the same thing for the hydrogen in water because hydrogen makes up two eighteenths of the mass of water. So if I knew the mass of water that was produced, I'd simply find two eighteenths of that mass and know how much hydrogen there was. And from that point, we could proceed to calculate the empirical formula as we've already learned how to do. So by way of an example here then, if we have 20 grams of an unknown hydrocarbon, so we don't know what this is, and they're burned, combustion analysis, and we get 60 grams of carbon dioxide, which of course contains all the carbon that was in this original sample, and we get 32.7 grams of water, all of which hydrogen came from this original sample, we can find how much carbon and how much hydrogen there were. Quick calculation, because 12 grams are carbon out of every 44 grams of CO2, we get as a mass 16.4 grams of carbon, which had to come from this 20 grams here. Now in this problem, I can figure out how much hydrogen was in the sample, not even using this data, because there are only two elements in this compound. One is carbon and the other is hydrogen. And the law of unity tells me whatever part isn't carbon has to be hydrogen. So if we had 20 grams and 16.4 of the grams were carbon, it means the difference, 3.6 grams, had to be hydrogen. But I can confirm it if I want by doing a conversion here. The fact that out of every 18 grams, the gram formula mass of water, two of those mass units are hydrogen atoms, 
You do this calculation, you get what's expected, 3.6 grams of hydrogen. Well, if we want to know the empirical formula, we don't use mass ratios, we use molar ratios. So I can go on to convert this mass of carbon to moles of carbon and this mass of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. One mole of carbon atoms is equal to 12 grams of carbon. And one mole of hydrogen atoms is equivalent to one gram of hydrogen. And therefore, I can calculate that essentially I have 1.36 moles of carbon in my original 20 grams and there were 3.6 moles of hydrogen in my original sample. So when I try to find the ratio, I take the smallest value and see if it divides evenly into the value for hydrogen, but it does not. It comes out to 5.3, nowhere near a whole number. We'd like to be within a tenth of a whole number if possible. Of course, if I then take half of the smallest value, which gives me 0.68, and divide 3.6 by 0.68, it again does not go evenly. Uh, excuse me, the first time I got 2.6, and this time I get 5.3. So I then try a third possibility. I divide the original value that's smallest by 3, and I get 0.453. And that does divide evenly into the other value it goes in approximately eight times. I actually got 7.94 when I did it. That's within a tenth of eight. So this is a three to eight ratio, and our empirical formula is C3H8. As a second example, here we have an unknown compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and a third element, nitrogen carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. And when we burn three grams of the sample, so we have three grams of this stuff that contains all three elements, we do produce, as expected, 5.82 grams of carbon dioxide, because of course all the carbon ends up as carbon atoms and carbon dioxide. And we also get 1.59 grams of water which is expected because we know all the hydrogen during combustion ends up as part of water. And how do you find how much nitrogen? Well, we can use the law of unity. Namely, if I can figure out what part of the CO2 is carbon and what part of this hydrogen or water is hydrogen, I can subtract those from the total mass of the original sample and the remainder has to be the nitrogen that was in the sample. So first I find out how much of this carbon dioxide is carbon. And of course, from formula masses, we know that 12 parts out of every 44 parts of CO2 are carbon. Do the quick calculation. It means the sample that was 3 grams contained 1.58 grams of carbon. We do the same thing for the hydrogen and water. Formula mass of water is 18 and the part that is hydrogen is 2, which means that our original sample contained 0.177 grams of hydrogen. Well, these don't add up to 3, and that's because, of course, there was nitrogen in the sample. So if we take 3 grams of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, subtract 1.58 grams of carbon, subtract 0.177 grams hydrogen, we're left with 1.24 grams of nitrogen. And now that I have the masses of all three elements, as I've been doing all along to get an empirical ratio, masses don't help me. I need moles, actual numbers of atoms. And one mole of carbon is equivalent to 12 grams of carbon, meaning that my original sample contained 0.131 moles of carbon atoms. And of course, as one mole of hydrogen is equivalent to one gram of hydrogen, the original sample also contained 0.177 moles of hydrogen atoms. And lastly, because a mole of nitrogen is equivalent to 14 grams of nitrogen, 
we know that there were 0 0.088 moles of nitrogen atoms. And this gives me my molar ratio from which I can derive the empirical formula. I take the smallest value, in this case 0 0.088, and see if the others are divisible to within a tenth of a whole number. But they are not because when you divide, uh, say, this one, 0 .1 .0 0.131 by 0 0.088, you get very close to one and a half. You're nowhere near a whole number. So instead, you take half of the smallest value, 0.044, and it divides to 2.97 when you divide it into this value, very close to 3, easily within a tenth. Same thing with the moles of hydrogen. When you do the division there for the moles of hydrogen, you notice that you get uh, 4.02. So we get 3 and 4, and don't forget this number came from dividing nitrogen by 2. So our formula, therefore, is C3. H4N2 as the empirical formula.